Hi guys, it's Tabitha. Today, I thought I would do a little bit of a different video explaining to you guys how to get the smoothest edits possible in After Effects, along with a voiceover. So here are my top tips and tricks how to get the smoothest edits possible. All right, so the first step for making smoother edits is to change the frame rate. If you click Command N to create a new composition or Command K to go to your composition settings, then you will see that the frame rate set by default can be from about 24 to 30 frames. So instead, we're gonna change this frame rate to 60. And also, it's important to keep in mind that even if you're not trying to make a smooth edit, it's always important to raise the frame rate if you're doing velocity edits as well. All right, so for step two, we're gonna be working on a motion blur. Now, once you have your clips or transition or edit ready, you're going to click the little motion blur icon right here. As long as you do this for all your clips, your motion blur will always be enabled. But to enable all of your clips again, go up here to click the motion blur icon again, and once it turns blue, then you'll know that your motion blur is on. But if you want to adjust your motion blur settings, you can also click Command K to go to your composition settings. Click the tab that says Advanced. Here under the motion blur settings, you can change the shutter angle to either increase or decrease your motion blur settings. Okay, so my third tip now is to use blur mode curves from Sapphire for your simple transitions. S underscore blur mo curves is not automatically installed in AE, so you have to get the Sapphire plugin to use it. But for basic transitions such as rotation, Y and X shift, and for zoom in and zoom out transitions, blur mo curves can take care of it. This next trick also comes in handy when you're doing zoom in or zoom out or scale transitions with blur mo curves. This time though, I'm also going to be adding warp to the mix. Look up warp in your effects and presets tab and then drag it to your clips for your zoom in and zoom out. Change the warp style from arc to fisheye. Keyframe the bend at zero and drag it to the beginning of your first clip. Next, create a keyframe of the bend at minus 100 and drag it to the end of your clip. Do this if you're gonna be zooming out of a clip. If you're gonna be zooming into a clip, copy the same keyframes, but instead put zero at the end of the second clip and put minus 100 at the beginning of it. But along with warp, optics composition is very helpful for the simplest of transitions. Search up optics composition and drag it to your clips. Check the box that says reverse lens distortion. Keyframe the field of view at zero and drag it to the beginning of your clip. And then keyframe the field of view again at 110 and drag it to the end of your clip. Usually you don't have to adjust the keyframes or easy ease them for this transition because it's smooth either way. And on your second clip, take optics composition again and do the exact same keyframes, except put 110 field of view at the beginning and zero field of view at the end. Now this effect is usually used for scale transitions, but it can also be used for slides and rotations. Now keyframes are probably the most important part of this video because they can dictate whether your edits look smooth or they look chunky or blocky. And as long as you play your graphs right, it can have the desired smooth effect that you need. So you need to highlight two or more of your keyframes and then right click on them and then go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease. Never click easy ease in or easy ease out and I'll show you why. If you go up and click the little graph icon, it will take you to the graph setting for these keyframes. On these keyframes, now that they're easy eased, you can see the blue arc. Click on the arc and then click on the little yellow line with a dot and then drag it to the right. Drag both sides to the right. If you're going into a transition on your first clip, this is called easing in a transition or easing in your graph. Because as you can see, the transition will start off slow and then at the very end, it will go fast. Now on your second clip to end the transition, it will be the exact same thing except the opposite side. So highlight both of your keyframes, easy ease them again, go to the graph icon, click it, go to your graph keyframes, click on the arc, except this time you're going to drag both of the yellow lines to the left. So now you're easing out of the keyframes. And this is good to mirror the other graph for your first clip because then you see that the transition is finally ending off fast and then going slow towards the end, making for a more smooth transition. Now the last step is to add panning on top of your edit or transitions. If you guys have seen it, I've posted a video in the past on how to do panning on After Effects, but I'll show you again really quickly. Click Option Command Y on your keyboard, or go up to the Layer tab and click Layer New Adjustment Layer. Go to the Effects and Presets tab once again, but this time search up Wiggle. Drag in Wiggle Position and Rotation to the new adjustment layer. See where my cursor is here is all we have to adjust. Automatically it goes to 30 rotation, but we're going to bring this down a notch. I would suggest changing it in between 3 to 5 for rotation. And then if you scroll up in the position, do the same thing. It's automatically at 50, but I would suggest changing it between 30 and 40. 
And lastly, also make sure to drag in motion tile to the same adjustment layer and drag it above all of the wiggle settings. Make sure to check mirror edges and make the output width and height at least 300 each. And then that concludes the end of the video. If you have followed all of these steps perfectly, then you should get the smoothest edit possible in After Effects. And if you guys could, I would really appreciate it if you could tell me down below whether the voiceover was more or less helpful than usual. Bye!